U.S. President Joe Biden has delivered a televised speech following his visit to Israel earlier this week. He used the address to draw a link between the conflict in Ukraine and Israel and urged Congress to do more to deliver aid to both nations. Let's have a listen to what President Biden has been saying. You know, history has taught us that when terrorists don't pay a price for their terror, when dictators don't pay a price for their aggression, they cause more chaos and death and more destruction. They keep going. And the cost and the threats to America and the world keep rising. If we walk away from Ukraine, if we turn our backs on Israel, it's just not worth it. That's why tomorrow I'm going to send to Congress an urgent budget request to fund America's national security needs, to support our critical partners, including Israel and Ukraine. Let's talk to our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette now, who is in Israel for us in southern Israel. Welcome to you, Lise. What's your assessment of Joe Biden's televised address? We saw him there in Israel just a couple of days ago, now appealing to Congress for more money, more aid for the country. Well, in a very divided America, in a very divided Congress, uh, opinions are very divided. There are some who don't like uh, the way that he is linking Ukraine and Israel. There are some on both sides of the house who don't want so much aid going to Israel. They're, they're before this crisis erupted, there was criticism among leading Republicans that too much aid was going to Ukraine. But Joe Biden has tried to take the moral high ground. You'll remember that when he first came to office, he wanted to divide the world into Democrats and autocrats, democratic societies and authoritarian societies. And now he is building on this message, comparing Hamas to Vladimir Putin and saying that the United States had a responsibility um, as a democratic country, as a, as a world leader, that he personally also believes that America has to take the lead. He did make an effort to say that, of course, that uh, the United States of America was standing right behind Israel. He also spoke about the suffering of the Palestinians and how aid needed to get into Gaza and his concern that this could spread across the region. So he tried to address many audiences. Not all of them will be happy, but this is how he moved in this rather historic live broadcast from, from, the, from the White House, from the Oval Office. The setting was, was important. The timing was important. The consequences will be important. Yeah, Lise, he also urged Israeli leaders to learn from U.S. mistakes after the biggest terror attack on their country, 9-11, and not to rush into something that could have unintended consequences. As you stand there today on the southern Israel border, waiting to see what happens, whether or not there will be a ground offensive, which is, ex is expected, isn't it, by Israeli troops into Gaza. What's your assessment? What's coming out of the Israeli military and the Israeli government about that? Well, I think for, for today, the, what everyone is waiting to see happen today, because it is also dependent on decisions of the Israeli military and the Israeli politicians, is will that Rafah crossing at the border with Egypt, the only way in and out of Gaza, where more than 100 lorries packed with food and, uh, food and water and medicine have been waiting and waiting for days to get in. We hear that Egyptians are gathering on that side of the border, waiting there, protesting until that desperately needed aid gets in. Not only the eyes of the world on that crossing, even the world's top diplomat, uh, Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General, is heading down to the Rafa crossing to be seen to be emphasizing just how crucial it is that aid gets into Gaza, not just those 20 trucks that President Joe Biden said he had secured an agreement for. It seemed to be a kind of a test case to ensure it could be done safely, to ensure it didn't get diverted to Hamas. But we are still waiting. The Gazans are still waiting. All of the aid agencies are still waiting to see whether that crossing opens today. And right now, the crossing itself is open, but it's not open to the aid trucks. There'll be a lot of, of waiting to see whether this, this first step takes place. Absolutely. And we'll, of course, be uh, updating our viewers should there be any developments at that rougher crossing. Lise, for now, thank you.